Hi everybody. Before we get to reading, and we will be reading The Skin I'm In, Chapter 16, I wanted to make just a couple of quick announcements. Um, the first is that I'm noticing quite a few of you asking for help, and I definitely want to help you. I miss you a lot, and it is um, a great joy for me to get to be here and help you. I am available for tutoring every single school day, 9.30 to 10.30 a.m., and in the afternoons on Mondays from 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. I put the links both on our grade level page and on your specific classroom page, so hopefully I'll see more of you there. Um, the second thing is some of you are working really hard to catch up, and I admire that so much. But I want to tell you, if you're just joining us right now for the first time or um, really recently, I would really rather you go back and do Chapter 1 before you start in chapter 16. The reason is chapter 16 will not make sense. Um, I've been asking a lot of questions about changes in the conflict and the characters, about the characters evolving relationships, but you don't have the background knowledge to answer those questions. So that being said, I want to tell everybody this. There are no late work penalties. There are no late work grades. Anytime you turn in an assignment, regardless of if it's late, you can receive full credit. But assignments are graded. So I would rather you complete quality work over quantity. And what that means is do your work well rather than just doing a ton of work, but none of it is very good because you are getting graded. And if you want to know more about um, our grading system for this quarter, again, um, let's catch up together on those tutoring hours, okay? So just to recap, if you're doing these assignments out of order, please make sure you start at the beginning. You can turn in work late and you will not receive a penalty, meaning you can receive full credit. It's okay. Um, and if you're having trouble keeping up or managing the workload or you need help doing an assignment or anything like that, or you want to know more about how you're graded or how this quarter is working, I do have tutoring hours. They're posted in our classroom both grade level and specific classes, as well as links to um, Zoom if you want to catch me there. So hopefully I'll see some of you there. We can give you more information to get started together. But right now it's time to read and we're on chapter 16. So let's go. Chapter 16. You getting soft, Malika, I say to myself. Just a quick note, I know that we just started but um, since we're in the rising action and we're tracking changes in our character and their conflict, I just want you to notice even Malika knows she's changing. She just said it. So um, I didn't say this before and I want to say now make sure you're continuing to watch how the uh, character is changing, the conflict is changing, and how we might be moving up toward a resolution. Okay? You getting soft, Malika, I say to myself. It's Saturday morning, and I've been up two hours already writing this stuff for Miss Saunders. If Char or the twins knew about this, they would think I was out of my mind. Doing schoolwork on the weekend. For fun! Mama's trying to work me to death today, too. She got me washing windows and clothes and everything else. I tell her I have to do homework. That's the only thing that got me off the hook for now. So here I am trying to think something up before I head to Char's. It's coming slow, but it's coming. Dear Diary, the sea is wild and mean. Water is crashing against the boat like a hundred angry lions. My body is wet with sweat and throw up from the others pressing cold around me like sticks of firewood. They chain us together like thieves and beat us till we bleed. I have made up my mind, though. I will show no weakness. I will be strong. Strong like the sea and the wind. Akilma. I finish writing, throw the paper in my drawer, and run out of the house. Mama don't know I'm headed for Char's place. She wouldn't like it. She says Char's sister Juju lets Char do anything she wants, lets her run wild. Mama's right about that. Just before I'm about to leave, Sweets calls. She asks why I'm going to Char's if I'm trying to shake Char loose, meaning she's trying to get rid of Char, not hang out with her. 
I'm bored, I tell her. I don't want to go to the avenue or hang out here at home. Besides, Char asked me to come over. Her sister's got some new things. I was going to say no. Then she mentioned something about a black and gold skirt set. I can hear Sweets listening on the other end of the phone. She doesn't say much before she hangs up. I thought I would be at Char's by one o'clock, but Mama keeps finding things for me to do. I have to clean out the cabinets, sweep, and take clothes to wash at the laundromat. I swear, Mama thinks I'm her slave. She don't even want to pay me a little something for doing so many chores. She says it's my house too and that I should be glad to help. When four o'clock comes, I'm knocking on Char's door. Can't nobody hear me though. The music's too loud. Some African stuff is playing. Drums are beating, singers are making animal noises, maracas are shaking. I push open the broken screen door and go inside. Juju is jamming. That's Char's sister. Her and about 10 other people are dancing. They're rubbing up on one another. When I'm halfway across the room, a man with dreadlocks down to his belt jumps in front of me and says, come jam with us, little sister. Then he starts moving like he's a snake. I shake my head and run up the steps. Juju tells the dreadlocked brother to turn up the music and leave me alone. The music gets louder and so do the pots and sticks people are banging on. I'm thinking that the party's just got started, but Char says it's finishing up from last night. I ask her how she sleeps through all the noise. She says she ain't been to sleep yet. That she gets paid big bucks from Juju to keep glasses clean, ashtrays emptied, and food coming. I don't mind missing sleep for $100, she says, waving the money in my face. Juju parties all the time, two, three times a month. People come from all over to go to her parties. Char and I find a place to talk upstairs in one of the empty bedrooms. I tell Char I couldn't stand being around so many strangers all the time. Char says I'm a wimp, that it ain't nothing for her to wake up and find somebody she ain't never seen using her bathroom two days after the party's done. Folks like being around Juju, she says. Don't they work? I ask. Some do, some don't, she says matter-of-factly. Juju don't care as long as they pay to get into the party. She ain't giving nobody nothing for free. I shake my head. I'm thinking, ain't no way I could live like this. Cigarette smoke burning your eyes. The house smelling like old chicken grease. Strangers passed out on your living room floor. None of it bothers Char. As long as she's looking fine, she's all right. But today she don't look so hot. She's got dark circles under her eyes and her hair is all over her head. You look like you've been sleeping already, I say, picking lint out of her hair. She pushes my hand away. I caught me a few winks about an hour ago. Juju didn't even miss me. If she did, I would be in real trouble. She says she don't pay me to sleep. Then Char lets out a giant yawn. She lays herself across the bed. I want to tell her I didn't come here to watch her sleep, but I feel sorry for her. So I just sit in the chair watching her nod off. But before Charlize can get to sleep good, Juju yells at the top of her lung, Charlize, what am I paying you for, girl? Get yourself down here, now. Charlize jumps up and runs down the stairs. Juju's yelling and screaming at her in front of everybody. I keep asking myself, why is Char taking that from her? Right? That's unusual for Char. Then I remember that Char hasn't gotten nobody but Juju. Juju is only 25. I sit upstairs by myself for a long while, too scared to go downstairs. Finally, I tell myself to get on out of here. When I do go get the courage to go downstairs, it's still a madhouse. Char's running around. People are lined up at the door trying to get into the house. 
Strangers are asking me where the bathroom is and how come there ain't no toilet paper. I don't tell Char I'm going. I just walk out the door. Last I'd seen, Char was rubbing her eyes and handing out drinks. Juju was shaking her hips and smoking a cigarette, yelling for somebody to turn up the music. Okay, um, we are still in the rising action, but you can see from my book, we're long past the middle. We're um, probably about three quarters done with the book. So that tells me as a reader, I'm probably getting pretty close to the climax. So my questioning doesn't change too much. Um, I'm still thinking through the conflict, but now I'm starting to ask myself things like, well, what exactly is escalating my conflict? What's making it grow? Because we know Malika has low self-esteem and people tease her. How is that developing throughout the rising action? And now I'm starting to kind of wonder, you know, how is Malika going to overcome this? Or is she? So I'm starting to watch um, how she's starting to overcome some of these factors. So I'm watching her relationships. The big one in this uh, chapter is Char. And something really interesting is she seems to feel sorry for Char in this um, particular chapter and another piece of information that I got is part of her kind of just wants to cut Char loose to not be friends anymore. So um, I'm wondering which side she's going to go with, whether she feels sorry for Char and is going to keep hanging out with her or whether she's eventually going to cut her loose. But then like so many of you have noticed, she kind of does depend on Char too. So it's very complicated. Um, I'm watching her actions and circumstances. And a very big deal that a few of you caught, but not everybody, is this class work that she's getting from Ms. Saunders. It's not just Ms. Saunders, and it's not the kids in the class. It's the work. Um, earlier in this chapter, you saw her writing as a Kilma. And I want you to really think about the things she's writing as a Kilma really parallel or go along with her own conflict. A Kilma for her is a chance to express herself and we saw the same thing with Romeo and Juliet um, so looking out for those things and then we're watching how our character is evolving and changing through her thoughts and her feelings um, particularly in this chapter I want you to think about the concept of strength um, Malika talks a lot about strength in this chapter she talks about whether she's going soft or whether she's scared or what her courage is. She talks about a Kilma's strength, her determination to not give up. And so I want you to think about the role of strength in this novel. Um, have we seen it from Malika the whole time? Are we seeing it now? Do you think this is just foreshadowing strength she'll have in the future? I'd like to know your ideas about that. In fact, that is question one on our Google Classroom. You have the option to um, write about the theme of strength within this chapter in the novel. Or if you choose, you can pick out a simile. There were, I believe, four in that chapter, and you can explain its meaning um, within the chapter for Malika as well. And then um, I also asked you about this particular chapter to do one more thing, and I'm sorry I'm grabbing my book because it has literally just slipped my mind. Um, I want for you to think about about oh never mind it's not this chapter i have two from the other chapter okay so yes make sure you are working in google classroom as well to do this assignment if you need help again catch me on tutoring hours or um hopefully this video is a little bit helpful to you you can always rewatch it and then the text is also posted in your classrooms and on the grade level classroom so hopefully you're enjoying the book that's all for now i will see you again